Hello, so uh, in front of you, you see many, many different cars and they're all from different manufacturers. So all in all, there's uh, a plus six, there's 14 different brands that manufacture at True 164. And this will be the last part, part four of my diecast brand overview. Uh, and this is what I personally consider the best of the best of, um, well, not every single one of them, obviously, but uh, basically the best that these things can offer at this scale um, let's see um, what I thought a lot about what I was going to say but I don't have it scripted I don't have any notes around me so um, I'm probably gonna forget things that I want to say and I'll say things and realize I get things wrong I hope it doesn't happen but knowing myself it probably will at some stage um, and um, just an example of what these things can do for instance this is a hot wheels version of the porsche 918 spider great looking car and this is a one dollar model and for what it is i think it's very well done um could use some back detailing since there's no side temple there's only top temple and they still didn't bother putting on um, any backlights which is a shame but uh, overall very great looking casting as far as hot wheels is concerned again one dollar but this is a Shuko version of the same car. Obviously not the same thing. It has a more detailed deco. But you can see uh, it actually has side mirrors. It has actual plastic inserts pieces. And you can see the side. There's actually a bit of an opening here. Not a ton. So um, yeah, this is the kind of stuff we're operating at. And not only does it have backlight details. It's actually a separate plastic insert piece. So this is kind of the... Um, that's the stuff we're dealing with right now and I want to explain a little bit why I decided to um, divide up part 3 and 4 um, which is not true 164 models and true 164 models because well like I said Hot Wheels does some amazing stuff um, so you have here the Porsche 918 Spider, and this is a basic $1 model which is again great for what it is and this is a car culture model this will be um, obviously this is coming from a team transport but individually you'll probably be selling for around seven dollars in Walmart norm, under normal circumstances and great looking models but then you you would think that the uh, Porsche 930 this is obviously the uh, RWP the Rauwelt Rauwelt Begriff if you're pronouncing it in German or the um, uh, ooh, the guy whose name I forgot, Akira Nakai-san or something like that, who once founded the company was Japanese, so I don't know how he would pronounce it, but going for German to be how felt the grief, rough world. And you will think that the um, 930 is a ton bigger than the Porsche 918 Spider. Well, it's not. This is the version 164 by Shuko. This is in True 164 by Shuko. And you see the 918 Spider is a ton bigger uh, than the 930. And you put the two 930s up. Again, not the exact same, especially since the RWB1 is customized. This is how big it's supposed to be. And even then, uh, if you take a whoopsie doops, and if you take a look at the uh, Shuko and the Hot Wheels, they're pretty much the same size, but the Hot Wheels is uh, you can't exactly trust Hot Wheels with their proportions, they uh, fundle a bit with it as well. So, I'm someone who likes consistency, and to me, as a result, it's important for uh, models to look consistent next to each other. They have to look right. And with companies like Hot Wheels, which, again, for both their $1 and their $7 premium range, amazing stuff for their price and I also love Johnny Lightning they do some good stuff not being one true 164 but I try to move a bit further away from them because they don't look right next to each other and looking right next to each other is what you get and especially with Hot Wheels again not necessarily of the right proportions either it has so uh, it doesn't have to be 164 164 just happens to be the scale I that appeals to me the most in terms of space and price but it can be 143 it can be 118 120 uh 120 whatever that's the most popular it can be 123.35 for all i'm concerned as long as all the models are the same scale across so anyway back to the topic true 164 and there are a lot of companies in manufacturing at true fix true 6 164 and this is my comparison so 
the uh, if you live in the United States as I am currently there are a couple brands there will be very familiar very accessible for you and I'm kind of arranging this from left to right uh, in terms of one is uh, accessibility and price as well as kind of the um, uh, it's not going to be exactly like that but it's going from cheaper to more expensive and generally speaking from less premium to more premium and the first we're going to be talking about is M2 Machines. Now M2 Machines is an American brand and I think, I'm not perfectly sure on this, but if you get them in like a Walmart, I haven't seen one, don't have a Walmart near me, I think these things go for them between 5 to $7 for the basic cars. This is a, a kit, model kit, so it costs a little bit more, but if you're getting the car in and of itself, it'll be around the same price, around, seven, uh, around 5 to $7 pricing. And these things are well made for the most part. Um, they have opening parts that don't necessarily always work great. And I've seen videos of people, uh, for instance, just opening up the um, engine hood from like a smaller, more delicate model and immediately just breaking it. They also have opening, well, not all of them, but a good amount of them have opening doors. But you see, it doesn't look that right, but it's metal, so it will be better than what you get from brands like Matchbox Premium or Moving Parts models. Uh, but some of them also don't close right. I only ha I have very limited experience with M2 machines and I think they're all right, but I do know people that are more experienced as a brand uh, that vehemently hate them. Um, but as far as I'm concerned, I think they are, they roll, but this one rolls because I put it in my, I uh, assemble the whole, well, not the whole thing, most of it myself, but uh, there are others that don't roll as well. For instance, this is the first one I got, the Nissan Fairlady Z432. And this one you can see it has a, the wheel right here. It's kind of like what you get with a lot of Johnny Lightning models, but worse. Uh, you can see that the wheel is not perfectly round, the tires don't fit. Um, overall, they look great um, from a distance, but you want to like actually handle them. They also probably they also look great in package as well. If you take them out, they're not as great as uh, it's very different from some of the better brands you'll see more down the road. But I think they're okay. I mean, I don't hate them. Maybe um, again, my personal experience with them hasn't been too bad. I haven't got like too many defects as other people have shown that I've seen online. Uh, but I think they're okay for their price. They also come in display with acrylic cases, which I'm not the biggest fan of, but it does offer you a better way to display them. So if that's what you want, you probably like them. But overall, I think M2 Machines sits uh, pretty much at the bottom of the True 164 barrel, even though I don't think they're terrible, as some would say. Next up is green light, and this is why I said it's generally speaking from less from a Less premium to more premium because I love green light. I'm gonna put this first and foremost. I know a lot of people who haven't had the best of luck with them, but in my per oh, I need to dust it off a little bit. But in my personal experience, green light has had pretty good quality control. I I have better experience with green light quality control than brands like Auto World, and most definitely better experience than uh, uh, Mini GT. Now they have models from like across like countries and stuff across different years you get like classic american car classic japanese cars and you get stuff all the way to like 2019 2020 and you also get movie models so that this one is obviously mad max interceptor from well the mad max series but it don't technically call it that but they have a hollywood series you can get a lot of models and i've had a pretty good experience with quality control and uh, just show you something else. This is the um, Plymouth Fiber Trans Am, and it's rotating the other way for some reason. Um, this is from Smokey and the Bandit. You can see it in Kill Bill, and apparently in Fast and the Furious as well, which I haven't seen. Still haven't seen it today. Really good. You see, really detailed. And if you put this next to the Johnny Lightning model, and Johnny Lightning is one of my favorite brands. Well, it's my f the favorite brand for uh, not true in 64 models. This compares. This is just as good as a Johnny Lightning, which is high praise from me. Um, they're not always gonna be 100% perfect, but the stuff I got has been great. And they also do the best True 164 uh, Ford GT, the second generation of the current, of the of the new Ford GT, you know, not the GT40. Uh, you see they have a lot of plastic, and a ton of pieces, 
a ton of features are used. They're super detailed, and as a result, you might not have the best experiences or quality control, but I have, personally. I have around 11 to 12 models, and it's been very, very, very good for me. And you could just look at how sharp this whole model is. You can see there's actually the uh, there's actually room under the flying buttress. You can see it's negative space the way it's supposed to be. And I think it's done better than any other company. Um, and these things I think go for like $67 per piece if you um, if you get them in like Walmart or uh, other stores. So I think it's really good like for their price. I will take it over, uh, honestly I'll take it over any other brand probably for their price, for a similar price. Next up is Auto World, and by the way, I generally um, start my showcase, so like the cars here was the best example I have, but if there's something that's not perfect, I will definitely show it to you. Um, Auto World, for the most part, does American models. I think they still haven't released anything that's not American, although I do know there's a um, uh, Toyota something coming pretty soon this year, so that would be pretty cool to see. Um, Auto World is owned by Ramped 2, which also operates um, Johnny Lightning and ooh, Racing Champions. But I think quality control wise, Auto World hasn't been as good as the other two brands. I've seen videos, people shine like, overall the castings are going to be perfect. Like the metallic part, the physical thing is going to be great, but they're, uh, they might have stuff with like paint scuffs like that. Um, but if you want to have like classic American cars, like um, Cadillacs, if you want to get like a, this one, the Buick station wagon, uh, the state wagon technically, uh, classic muscle cars, there's, uh, Auto World is very good for them. The one thing um, they might be able to improve is that they almost, they very rarely use plastic inserts for their headlights. Some do, but most don't. And you can see, uh, look at that detail. It's really good. I don't have the, best experiences are quality control as far as paint is concerned which is uh, echoed by some of the other videos I've seen but overall they're really good. Um, this uh, Dodge Challenger for example you can see uh, the hood is not, uh, it's got a bit of a stuff like the orange where it's supposed to be black and black where it's supposed to be orange but overall like if you look at the car as a whole like stance, scale, the details they're all going to be there. Oh, and by the way, like Greenlight, I've heard people saying like some of their stuff, I think the vast majority of their stuff are pretty great, but uh, there's some Greenlight models that like have a bit weird stance sometimes. It's not going to be 100% perfect. The mass, vast majority of times, I, though, I think Greenlight is amazing. But Auto World, if you want American vehicles, these are probably going to be great. Um, I do have an earlier version, one of their uh, first production models that's pretty, um, got quite a bit of a uh, quality control problem, but I don't think it's going to be fair to bring that up. And I also ordered a um, Ford GT40 from Auto World, which I'm really excited to get. Next up, we are already moving to uh, moving out of the United States. So these three are pretty much, yeah, these three are pretty much the only true 164 models that's domestic to the United States. And out of them, I think uh, most people might prefer Auto World. I just have such a soft spot. Soft for a green light and I do love how many uh, I do love their variety and their selection of models so I personally prefer a green light but I can totally understand why people most people will prefer um, auto world although I've heard people saying that they think auto world is like the second best brand after Tomica limited vintage and I cannot personally agree with that by the way uh, green light rolls for the most uh, green light rolls some of them not so perfectly but they roll and the same was auto world not all of them are going to roll perfectly but they roll for the most part next up is mini gt mini gt is owned by tsm true scale models which is based in hong kong and this Waira, still probably my favorite model in my collection this one is pitch perfect they mostly do supercars, although uh, for the last year or so, they pretty much just been doing recolors of their existing models, especially the uh, Nissan GTR R35, which no, I'm not the biggest fan of I have. Oh, oh, this is the problem of not taking notes. I'll, I'll, I'll go back to it probably. I have to remember that. Uh, um, just gonna put the car right in front of me so I can remind myself to go back to it. Um, not the biggest fan of the R35, don't like, um, not the biggest fan of how it looks, but it's, it's a cool car, I do have some in my collection. But uh, the Wyra, you can see like gorgeous, gorgeous detail for 164. 
uh, everything uh, before this, this these will be pretty much in the sub ten dollar range. Uh, Auto World will be like seven to eight dollars. Green Light six to seven dollars. M2 Machines probably around the same as Green Light. Uh, this one you can get in the United States for uh, around twelve to fifteen dollars. Um, so this is definitely starting to get expensive. But you can see the interior of the car. Obviously, a, a lot of most of the credit probably goes to Horatio Pagani, who designed a, such a gorgeous and different looking car. But you can also give credit to Mini GT for replicating that interior. This is just gorgeous. Mini GT models you can see for the first time, pretty much. Well, uh, from the previous brands, they actually have uh, side mirrors and. You can see this is actually soft rubber, so it doesn't break as easily. I'm a bit clumsy every in everyday life, so I've definitely touched it a few times, but it's still not breaking, thank goodness. Um, yeah, but the thing with Mini GTs, I definitely had bad experiences with quality control. Um, and I've tried to do a lot of stuff to fix it. This one, for instance, came to me with the, um, the front splitter. It's still not perfectly fixed. I had to dis disassemble it and reassemble it, but you can still see the, f uh, the front splitter is um, a little bit to this side. And you can see the same from the base as well. The, um, there's more space on this side than there is to this side. And you can see from the back, the uh, back wing, there's a molding issue right here. Which is just really annoying. I mean, still looks good. Don't get me wrong. Especially if you put it in a display case and look at it from a little bit of a distance. It's going to look really good. But at this price range, I expect things to be right. And there's another one. Now, this is probably uh, scuffing from the packaging. But you can see all... Uh, uh, no, I... No, I... I, th I really hope Mini GT quality control can be better. Because they, when the stuff has no quality control issues it's genuinely awesome looking but they do have at least to me from my personal experience quite a bit of quality control issues especially with the paint but other stuff as well oh and there's another mclaren center was a bent piece but i'm not gonna bother showing you this is shuko shuko is a german company and they do mostly european stuff you can see this porsche in front of you i showed you earlier the uh, porsche 918 spider and they have like VW vans as well as um, Land Rover Defenders and you can see these look really really good and like the previous brands they all have a ton of details a ton of extra parts uh, pretty good interiors but it's only molding not really anything paint the turbo you can see from here it's just really sharp uh, I love Shuko and especially in terms of materials like the metal and the plastic it's really good uh, but their paint is not always on point, especially when you go to like more complicated models with like paint that needs to go through go across different parts. For instance, you can see here on this 918 Spider, the paint is not necessarily covering the gap right here, and you can see the front as well. It's missing a bit of a white. The stripes are a bit weird. Um, but again, uh, looks really good from a distance. It, you probably wouldn't notice it. Maybe I'm just being super picky, which I mean, I probably am. But when you get stuff with that doesn't have super complicated paint, like this Defender right here, it's sharp. It's so sharp. And you can really appreciate the amount of details they put on this thing. You can appreciate the actual parts they have. It's, I love Shuko. Uh, the only shame is that they don't have a ton of other models. I definitely want to just get like one version of each of their offerings but there's not a lot of them and as far as i know they pretty much only do european cars and we're going back to asia again well I'm pretty sure it's asia right I, mean, I didn't do my homework in regarding uh, inno 64 because it's my first car and got it like yesterday or a couple of days ago i can't even keep track but inno 64 um very very detailed and it's going to be a bit well a little bit more expensive than shuko and you can see very detailed and if you look inside into the interior you can see the uh, racing harness it's the uh, red chairs it's and you can see the printing at the back it's just really really sharp now on um, the quality control was these things are not perfect either if you see my standalone video on this AE86 you know uh, some of the um, paint is not perfectly centered so after that video was done I had to take a paintbrush and 
apply paint to it which I really don't think I should do in this uh, in this kind of premium range and especially the prices they're asking but overall it's really sharp like look at the front lights it's really good and this is the beginning of the, the models that really don't roll uh, this one you can see um, just doesn't roll whatsoever well I mean it rolls but it's got a lot of friction in here if you put it on the on a hard surface and try to roll it as you would roll like a Hot Wheels car it's not going to roll at all next up is Tarmac Works and by the way Tarmac Works and NL64 and Tomic Limited a lot of the other brands you see I only have one models of so I have to put this first and foremost I don't have the most experience with them so I don't claim to be an expert Tarmac Works is also based in Hong Kong and they do a lot of racing cars which is really cool this Audi R8 in mobile delivery you see it's so sharp and this one doesn't roll either I know I think for the majority of stuff their uh, their stuff don't really roll yesterday I was looking at a video and someone was like they're not gonna get a penny out of me because they don't roll I was like first of all chill I mean YouTube comments so what am I expecting but still look at the uh, amount of Look at the amount of details it put in like all of the paint is so sharp you can see like the uh, website you can see the um license plate it's so good it's all the extra details they put in here i mean so great it doesn't roll bummer but who cares and in real life these supercars have like really really tight wheel wells so it's only makes sense that if you shrink it down to 164 it's, you know, it's gonna be very hard to make it uh, make it so that, that there's enough room between the wheel and the wheel wells that make a turn. Like I can more than understand why it's not going to be perfect. This version I got over looked really good but there is a bit of a paint scuff here if you look at really detail. Um, right here something happened but overall looks really good and this is something that you will not notice from like any distance. And this is the um, I mean this is a heavy hitter isn't it? Tomica Limited Vintage. Now, pretty much everyone agrees that this is the best company. If you want True 164, this is it. Uh, if you get a Tomica Limited Vintage version, you don't have to worry about getting anything else from any other company because they will not do it better. Uh, these things are expensive. Everything. Um, uh, oh, by the way, Tarmac Works has two lines. This is what's called the Global 64, so it's their quote unquote more basic line. They also have Global 64. Um, these uh, Global 64 versions will probably be around like $20 ship. They're a Hobby 64, they're more premium version. The stuff will probably cost a bit more than that, maybe 30 So um, Tomica Limited Vintage is actually not necessarily going to be as expensive as a, top, a um, top of the line Tomac Works model, but I don't have any experience with Hobby 64. I do hope to get one though. That's going to be expensive, but Tomica Limited Vintage are, excuse the language, but they're anal about perfection. They don't do any model without having the actual car in their studio. And if you look at anything like this is perfectly stuck. This RX-7 looks exactly as an RX-7 will look shrink, shrunken down to 164. Rolls perfectly. Suspension. It's gorgeous. This thing is perfect. And uh, this is my only experience with it, although I do have another a skyline coming in, but you will not see any flaw on this model, and I'm pretty sure no one has found, been able to find any flaws on it. I mean, probably someone has, but I'm sure it's going to be very, very unlikely. Now, oof, it's so hot. I turn off the AC because otherwise it's going to be so loud, but now I'm sweating like nobody's business. There are some other um, brands as well. Let's see what's the proper way we should do this. So another Japanese brand uh, is Kyosho, and Kyosho again does True 164. You can see it's a Ferrari, and pretty much the True 164 models you can get on the market right now are, Ferrari, are Kyosho and Tomica Limited Vintage. Tomica or its parent company Takara Tomi got the sub licensing from the Maisto from the Mei Chong group which owns Maisto and Burago. But Kyosho, um, very smart for them, uh, actually just give you the parts loose so you can construct it yourself. So it's technically a model kit, not a die cast model, so you can still get them. They're really good. This one happens to roll freely, but apparently a lot of them don't. 
but again look at those details it's really gorgeous looking uh, the wheels are really nice the tires are really really nice yeah I think uh, and obviously you can actually get newer models I know I got the 250 tested also but you can actually get an Enzo Ferrari or a La Ferrari from Kyosho at True 164 which you cannot get from Tomica Limited Vintage next up is a brand that's very similar to Kyosho as far as quality is concerned and, I'm by, and by that I mean really really high quality uh, this is Aoshima and they I mean I don't really need to say much it's uh, Kyosho quality and you can see how good it is just by it spinning around uh, the only problem is, is their model selection they pretty much only do Japanese cars custom Japanese cars in the Boso Zoku style which is really cool if you're into that if you're not into that tough luck but again these are really 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 nice models next up is Sparky um, Sparky is owned by Spark Models which is based in Macau and you can see these are actual um, race cars and actual racing liveries um, really really nicely detailed I think they're pretty delicate I've seen people just actually knocked off um, side mirrors from them I think their paint is very delicate as well but it's really gorgeously detailed and it also offers, um, it actually has a Mazda 787B in True 164. So if you want that model, uh, you have you either have to pay around 70 to $80 for Atomica Limited Vintage, which obviously is going to be much, much superior as opening parts and stuff. But uh, Or you can pay about $20 for a Sparky version. I mean, Sparkies are usually around $15 ship, but presumably the... Um, Mazda 787 is a much more desirable model. I like them a lot. Very detailed. Doesn't roll, but again, these hybrid cars, it's unlikely that they're going to roll. Um, next up, Aero Car. Let's see this Suzuki Every. You can see immediately it has an opening part, and a lot of them do. I don't know of all of them. They also do the uh, AMG G36 6x6, which is really cool. I you want to get one I, I want one of so many things is gonna be so expensive but you can see um really really nicely detail um, again it's just not much to say like this is all these stuff are pretty much the pinnacle of true 164 models oh it's gorgeous but um, it doesn't really I mean it rolls but you have to be careful is some of their axles and stuff are really delicate I uh, I would recommend not trying to roll them too much. And last couple of weird ones. This is a BMW, um, whatchamacallit, dealership specific model. It's manufactured by some random Chinese manufacturer, but these are really, really good. This is the only example of what I would consider a true 164 premium model that does not have rubber tires. And yes, uh, it might be hard to see because the tires, the wheels look really good, not rubber tires. And uh, but you can see overall really gorgeous details, plastic inserts for the lights, uh, perfect quality control, which is again Mini GT, uh, Mini GT, and Auto World to a lesser extent. Why can't you? This is just random Chinese company I've never heard of before. And some of the other stuff they do also include like this one you can, again you can see that's plastic wheels but it genuinely doesn't look like that really sharp details really cool if you like bmws you have these things go for 650 on their website uh if you live next to a bmw dealership you can get them without shipping uh and if you um if you want them shipped it probably costs around a tiny bit more than ten dollars with shipping included and i think it's still really really good price and last but not least, this is another oddball one. You probably see me do the whole video on the whole set. This is Granny and Partner, a weird company that seems to be based in Hong Kong and Italy at the same time. And um, they they have a Lamborghini set of 164 models, so I haven't been able to really find them. They also have a Ferrari set, which again I haven't been able to find them. But um, this is probably the most famous one. This is the 7 Taiwan 711 exclusive hypercar set. So you get four Bugattis, four Paganis, and four McLarens. And for me, I love, love, love Pagani. And this is 
one of the very few ways you can get a Zonda. Now, on Tarmac Works does it, but so far the only release has been a um, like an event exclusive and super expensive. They are coming out with another silver Zonda, which I definitely plan on getting. But this one is still really, really good. You have to put it in, put it yourself, and you also have to have them shipped from Taiwan. You could, if you get the whole set, you'll get um get them for around twelve, almost twelve dollars a piece. But if you get them individually, um, I mean that's with shipping included, shipping and taxes included. If you want to get them individually, well, it depends on the model you get. But yeah, engine details. Now, um, quite a bit of Tarmac Works Global sixty four models have opening engine hoods. Uh, which unfortunately I don't have an example to show you. Um, yeah, this is really, really, really cool. And Zonda is one of the ones you, there's that you can't really get uh, from other companies. It's it's a bit of a struggle to put it back. But uh, another one would be the Veyron. In the set, there's two Veyrons. There's a standard Veyron 16.4, but there's also a Super Sport version, and Again, Shu-164, and I'm not going to do it, but it also has an opening back hatch that shows you the engine. Really, really cool. Uh, if you know about Hot Wheels, you know the Hot Wheels Veyron is very hard to find, very expensive. But honestly, I love Hot Wheels, but the Hot Wheels version proportions are very weird, and it's obviously not Shu-164. Um, and you can, for the price, you can probably get one of those, any one of these already, and think it's much, much better. And the only other True 164 alternative would be Auto R. And Auto R, I think the cheapest one you can get is a Dubai Police Edition that's sold for like $60 with shipping. Uh, I mean, $60, which is already included in shipping, but still very, very pricey. And I don't think these have, I don't think the Auto R True 164 ones have rubber tires either, but I'm not sure. These have rubber tires and roll perfectly, which is really cool. So, ooh, it's been a long time. It's been half an hour. These are the, so how many did I say? 8 plus 6, 14 different brands of True 164. I think it's really, really cool. And just having them all together, you can see from, um, sorry, the, the lighter colors are sucking all the light. You can see from like, um, I don't think I need this anymore. Like the largest model next to like one of the smallest models you can see this is how they're supposed to look next to each other isn't this amazing like this is why i love true to scale they just look so right next to each other and it's really really fascinating for me personally um in terms of rollability for uh, those people that care m2 rolls but not really well green light for the most part rolls pretty well and ooh, who's here? Auto War for the most part roll really well. Um, what are you called? Mini G2 rolls very well. Uh, Shuko rolls very well. Uh, NO64 doesn't really roll. Tarmac Works doesn't really roll. I mean, I guess you can say it rolls a little bit, but you can see already the front wheels are starting to become locked. Um, Tommy Limited Vintage rolls perfectly with suspension. Um, I'm throwing cars all over the place. You can't really tell anymore. Aoshima doesn't really roll. Um, Kyosho, this one rolls, but a lot of them don't. These BMW ones roll perfectly because they have rubber wheels. Um, what you might call it, era cars roll, but I would recommend against it because these things are very, very delicate. The uh, Grainy and Partners roll very, very well. And finally, you who you are sparky like, hey i always thought these things don't roll i guess it rolls but i'm genuinely surprised i haven't been able to get it rolled before uh, which actually makes me a bit concerned and in terms of you if mm -hmm. you care about like uh model bases and stuff Metal base, metal base, metal base, metal base, metal base i think plastic actually in the previous video i said it's uh uh I said it's metal, but I don't think so. I think it might be plastic. Plastic, metal, plastic, 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 mm -hmm. right? Yeah, plastic, mm -hmm. plastic, plastic, plastic. Oh, that's what I was gonna say. I, I was talking about the uh, Nissan GTR, and I remember something I wanted to say about green light. Green light, this one is a metal base, but not all of them are. For instance, this GTR R35. 
uh, plastic base and it's really annoying sometimes because you don't really know if the model you're getting has a metal base or a plastic base because not only some GTRs from Greenlight are pl have plastic bases, which is just a bit annoying. And some of the stuff is metal based, some of the stuff is plastic based. If you care about that stuff, it might be annoying. I don't really care that much, but it would be good to know. Whew. So uh, overall, I think the big winners, in my opinion, um, are these ones. So I love Greenlight. I've said many times before, and I'll say again, in like the lower price range, these things are a gem. Auto World is also amazing if you love American cars. Mini GT, if you get something with perfect quality control, you will love it, but it's hardly a guarantee. I love Shuko, but get stuff that doesn't have too detailed of a print. Uh, I want to recommend NL64 and Tarmac Works, but and I've seen a lot of great stuff on YouTube that suggests that they're wonderful, but my personal experience currently is not going to end up in a recommendation, but I'm definitely getting more of those. Tommy Cole Vintage Vintage, 100% yes, but they are hugely expensive. Um, just going through here, Sparky, yes. Uh, Granny and Partners, yes, especially if you want a Veyron or a Zonda. Air Cars, yes. And, but I think their best stuff is probably going to be the uh, Mercedes or the Suzuki Jimny. Mm -hmm. BMW, 100% yes, especially if you can get one uh, from a dealership close to you so you don't have to pay shipping, then, that, then that's basically stealing. Kyosho, yes, and Aoshima, if you're into Boso Zoku, 100% yes. So that's all of my look at True 164. And this will also be the last video of my brand comparison. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you found it entertaining and slash or educational. Thank you for watching. And I definitely will be back again. Summer for me. I don't have a ton of stuff to do. I'm stuck in New York. Coronavirus and protesting. I saw a video. Uh, I actually saw a video earlier today saying that the, uh, uh, the Lego store in... Um, because I mean, I, I still collect Lego, but the Lego store in the Iron Iron Building has been looted, and I just oh, upsets me so much because I 100% support the cause that the protesters are about, and I think it's definitely an important thing that you know that people definitely should pay attention to. But I don't know the problem with those looters because. My guess is chances are they don't, they're not even here to support the cause. They're just here to find an excuse to start looting, which is just really, really awful. Because um, there's nothing worse than someone who's trying to give reasons for the right wing to say, oh, look at you, like, you, you say you're about civil rights and whatever, but you actually just want to reason to loot. That's just awful. Like, nothing can damage a cause more than that. Um, it's kind of like people that make false rape accusations, right? Because um, obviously rape is horrible and absolutely should not be a thing. But the more there are false accusations, the more people, I mean, people that are already on the right wing for one thing, but people that are um, more split down the middle. And the more these accu false accusations happen, the more people that are in the middle are going to say, Maybe you, maybe everyone is just making stuff up. Obviously, the people who think that are also not great people to begin with. But like, this is the this is a case of all uh, like these people making false accusations, and I've I've seen people make false accusations in undergrad. Uh, people doing that is just creating a um, uh, boy that cries wolf scenario. And at the end of the day, like people that are actually. Uh, suffered rape and sexual assault are not going to be lead because of these other people that are just using it as a reason for personal gain which is just absolutely hor uh, horrendous and the same with the uh, the looters that are um, using protests as a chance to um, get personal financial gain it's just uh, like worse I mean this is you can't find anything that's more damaging to the cause than assholes like this in my opinion uh, I don't want to go on a political rampage, uh, I mean political rant, but this is the end of the video, right? It's my YouTube channel, I do whatever I want. Uh, but anyway, all I'm saying is I have, I'm going to have free time being stuck in the city um, to make videos, to get more stuff. I'm also going to have to look into uh, 
PhD applications and working on my uh, using this time to do some more research for my graduate thesis writing about a uh, German Jewish family that escaped to uh, New York City specifically in Queens Jackson Heights and I'm gonna do more um, primary materials and I'm gonna uh, look at some of the more the German stuff for this semester I pretty much exhausted everything that's in English but over the summer I actually get a chance to practice my German reading which is nice looking through the memoirs and diaries which will be as well as the um, correspondence which will be really cool and yeah just prepare for my final master's thesis and hopefully I'll uh, use it as a writing sample to apply for PhD so um I don't know, maybe three, maybe one person is still listening at the end of the, all of this. But uh, thank you for watching. Again, hope you enjoyed the videos. And I will definitely be back. Bye-bye.